Now that we have our basic HTML5 based structure, we need to style it with CSS in order to actually give it that layout that we saw in the mockup. At the moment, our design looks like this because we don't have any text in it at all. And by default, divisions and indeed those HTML5 uh, structural elements as well aren't actually visual. The only thing that we're seeing here is the wrapper tag. So if I select that, you'll see that div ID wrapper is selected. That's because Dreamweaver Design View shows you the outline to help you select divisions. This isn't the case currently with um, HTML5 layout based tags. So in order to help uh, see where these particular tags are, what I'm going to do is just add a couple of extra things into our HTML. So into my header, I'm going to put an H1, a heading size one um, with the words my site in it. Uh, in nav, I'm going to write three imaginary um, navigation uh, buttons, home links and contact. I'm separating them with a vertical line character, uh, which you should be able to find on the keyboard. Um, in article, I'm going to put another H1, uh, which just says welcome. And into each section, I'm going to put... Um, and H2 and a simple paragraph as well. Like that. And just to save time, I'm going to copy paste that section over the other one. Oops. Copy it over the other one, as I said, so that we've got two of those. In the aside, I'm going to put an H3 and write a title called sidebar and then I'm going to put in a paragraph as well and it should be justified something like that so now we've got some content in our page when you click on design view it will update and you should see that now I've got orange paragraphs there that's because I already have a rule in my style sheet from earlier which defined that by default the paragraph should be uh, having that orange text color. Now, what we're going to do is to start writing rules for each of those sections. Um, so the first element in there that we don't have a rule for yet is the division called wrapper. So remember, our rules for IDs uh, are down here. It's now, we don't really have any of these anymore. So I'm going to get rid of all of those and uh, I'm just going to start off by writing a rule for that wrapper. So the wrapper is holding the page together. So an overall uh, page width is going to be 960 pixels. Now there's a whole bunch of different theories on what your overall page width, width should be. But basically what we're doing is catering for people who are still working at a resolution of 1024 pixels by 768 pixels. Um, now that basic resolution is kind of a, a bare minimum and as a result if you keep your site just narrower than that then you won't uh, make people at low resolution scroll horizontally which is what you want to avoid doing. So we've put in a width of 960 so if I save that and look back if I switch to my design view you can see that the outside of that wrapper is at 960 now then what we also need to do is give it left and right automatic margins. So I'll show you one way of writing this. It would be margin hyphen left and margin hyphen right sets to auto. Now what that's going to do is evaluate the space either side and if I add in position relative which is required for some browsers it, it will work without it for some um, but margin left and right auto will basically create space outside of the box like we saw uh, in the earlier video um, in order to keep it in the center of the page. So now if I switch back to design view you can see that it's, it's automatically looked at the space it's in and subtracted the width of itself from the overall space it's got to work with and created that gap either side. So that's what, that is what most sites do in order to keep their frames in the center of the page margin left and right auto but there is a better way of writing that we don't have to write hyphen left hyphen right hyphen top and hyphen bottom we can just write margin and write in four different values 
Now, if you want to write a comment at this point, it might be a good idea. So just to explain, this is top, right, bottom, left. And if you think of it going clockwise, then this is top, this is right, this is bottom, and this is left. So we can simply say top, right, bottom, left. And there's an even simpler way of writing that. If you wanted to write it with just three values, you can write it top, left and right, and bottom. So without confusing you too much, the other way of writing it is like this, top, left, right, so that's one single value, and bottom. And that will look like this. Margin, zero for the top, left and right, auto, and bottom, zero. So this is four value way of writing it, and this is a three way value of writing it. So I'm gonna get rid of the less efficient four value method and leave myself with the three values like that. So that's setting up our uh, wrapper in the center there. Then I can go ahead and write the rules for the other section. So in my header, I'm gonna start off by giving it a float left. So that allows it to fit into a structure where certain um, parts of the page might sit next to one another. I'm gonna give it the same overall width as the rest of the page. So 960, and I'm gonna give it a height of, let's say 140. And if I save that, you can see that already my header has started to create itself there. It's pushed the other uh, sections down the page. So what I'm also going to do with each of these is to give them a background color so that you can see where they are uh, in design view. So it's not going to be pretty, it's not going to look particularly nice, but it will allow you to see where they are as I carry on. So that's header. My next tag was nav, so I'm going to write a rule for that. Yet again I say float left. Even though this isn't sitting next to something else, um, in terms of columns, we do need to have float on everything in order to make the entire structure work. So we'll say float left there. And again, I'm going to say a width of 960. And I'll say a height of, let's say, 40. And again, I'm going to put in a background color. This is going to, like I said, allow you to see what's going on as I build this. I don't in any way recommend that you use this kind of uh, color scheme uh, when you're finished working on your project, obviously. Um, so there's my uh, header, there's my nav so far. Uh, the next one to put in is the article. So I'm gonna write a, a rule for an article tag. And it's gonna float left. And it might have a width of, let's say 330 px. And we're not going to give this a height. Now, the reason we don't give this a height is because really what we want to do is allow it to expand to whatever content is inside it and keep continuing down the page. So I'm going to give it a background color so that you can see what's going on. And I'm going to give that a dark gray and I'm going to give my sections a lighter gray. So into the article, we have sections. So what I will do is actually write a rule that's specific to that, just in case I want to use a section tag somewhere else. So I might want to put in a section inside my aside later on, for example. So if I want to write a rule for section inside article, I write the name of the one it's in and then the name of the one I'm addressing. So it's that hierarchical order and you'll see more of that as we go along. So I'm gonna put in float left. I'm gonna give it the same width And again, I'm not going to put in a height for this. I'm going to let it expand to what I want it to do. But to keep uh, the other section away from it, I'm going to put a margin on the bottom of that. So remember, top, right, bottom, left. So that will create a gap below that section. And yet again, to help you guys out, I'm going to put in a background color so that you can see what's going on. 
So if I switch back to my design view now, you can see that I've got uh, a width of 330 there and I've got my different sections with a gap below them inside my dark grey article. Now, uh, obviously my brain escapes me. I didn't mean 330. I meant 630 for that because that needs to be the wide part of the page. Good. So what I'm going to do next is to do a rule for the aside. So I'm going to say aside, which is also going to float left. And it's going to have a width of, you guessed it, 330. And again, it's not going to have height. So I'm going to straight away just go in and do the background color. Oops. And give that something horrendous looking so that you can see it. Like that. And finally, what I've, I believe, neglected to do is just to put something in the footer. So I'm just jumping back to my HTML and in the footer, put some nonsense text. Okay, so at the moment, the footer is not sitting in the right place. Now, when you write a rule for a footer, it's going to be slightly different to the others. Now, remember, it's not a tag. It's a division with an ID called footer. So we can't write it by itself. We need a hash symbol at the start. If you're on a Mac, by the way, haven't mentioned this yet. I apologize. It's Alt and 3 to get the hash symbol. But hopefully you've Googled that by now. So for the footer, instead of float, we have clear both. What this does is it allows the wrapper's background to uh, extend to the height of um, all of the sections inside the page. So all of the different elements in the structure. Otherwise, wrapper won't continue down to the bottom. So clear both effectively uh, should be put on the last thing in your structure as it uh, is there to basically um, give the entire structure um, the right height, I should say. So we do need to give it a width. Uh, and height so we'll give that a width of uh, 960 and I'm just going to give it a height of let's say 100 so clear both width and height and yet again we'll give it a background color so that you guys can see what's going on with that structure and that will do and we'll save the style sheet go back to the HTML and now you can see effectively we've now got that structure built so quite simply we can carry on working obviously I need to redesign what that paragraph looks like because it's orange on a colored background but we're not going to keep these background colors I've said it before but just to reiterate they are just to help you see uh, in design view where these sections are and also when we check it in a browser so Crucially, never trust the design view. So design view is there to help by showing you an approximation of what your page should look like, but people are going to open it in a web browser. Okay, so get as many web browsers as you can, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, Mac Safari, Opera, all of the different ones you can, and test out your page and make sure it looks as close as you wanted it to um, to each browser. So just to test that out ourselves what I want you to do is make sure everything's saved in Dreamweaver um, grab your HTML file and open it in whatever browser you happen to fancy working with so we'll just start with Safari to keep things simple and just to check that is pretty much what I designed okay so that's that's fantastic so that's the basic kind of CSS that you'll need to achieve a simple layout with HTML5 and CSS